Hey everybody, Spencer here with our first entry in the Shin Megami Tensei Network Monthly Manga Mondays, which I probably messed up somehow, but I thought having three letter M's would be good alliteration, so let me know how terrible of a title it is. But today I wanted to review Persona 5 The Manga Volume 1. Brought to us in the West by our good friends at Viz Media. Um, to my knowledge, they're actually this is their first SMT or Persona manga that they have ever released. I know so far we have Devil Survivor and Persona Q, as well as Udon put out Persona 3 and 4. So I figured I wanted to try something a little bit different kind of a quicker vlog style video where I pick a volume of manga for the month. Give it a quick little review. Let me know. Let me tell you guys what I think about it in a very easy to do video like this, so I don't really have to edit and can think of it as like a really lazy book club. So, without further ado, uh, for all of you who may not know, this adaptation is actually done by Hisato Murasaki, whose name I most likely probably budgeted. I'm gonna put this down so I stop flailing it all over the place. Um. This is a weird manga in the sense of I've known about it for, let's see, I know it was announced when the game came out in 2016 in Japan, and this cover art was shown off a really long time ago, and I've never been a fan of it. The cover of it really turned me off, and I never looked into the rest of its art, and this is the most, like, cliche thing ever, but this is a really good example of don't judge a book by its cover, because while the outside cover art, I think, I don't, I don't even know, it's like, it's not that it's drawn bad, I think it's the face is a little off to me, or maybe the coloring, it's kind of weird. That being said, the rest of this manga is really, really well drawn. Like, he nails the style and he nails the feel of these characters. And that's not even getting into how it is as an adaptation. So, like, he just really nails the feel and the look of everything in terms of, like, how grimy Kamoshida acts and how grand and epic all of the persona summonings look like with everybody and he even actually does a unique spin on Morgana who is always kind of a weird one to um draw because Morgana is the definition of like a cartoon character so Morgana is like a cartoon style cat but his features and how he animates is almost even different from each game to game. Like in Persona 5 Scramble I've been playing recently, he, when he runs around, it's literally a cartoon like sp spurly, whirly, dirly thingy for a very, very good uh, description there. So he has a lot of different ways to kind of make his version of those characters from Persona 5 really resonate and still feel like they're from the game while not really feeling like a carbon copy. And some of the ways that it does this is uh, Volume 1, for lack of a better word, covers from the start of Persona 5 up until Ryuji summons his first Persona, as well as you get a tease and you're kind of introduced to the detectives at the end. Uh, which I will say... Uh, I guess spoilers for a manga slash the beginning of Persona 5. So this is kind of a weird one. But uh, some of the changes they do are really interesting. Like the way you are introduced to Goro is instead of at the police station where he is saying, hey, let's go out for sushi. You're introduced to him speaking to the detective. And there's no flashback and flash forward, at least so far. It has just been... Here you are, uh, Joker is referred to as Akira in this, that's his uh, per given name. And also, if you are not aware, uh, he has a personality, which is good. It's not like you, and it's not like, oh god, I think Makoto is from Persona 3, but it's been a while since I've seen his manga canon name. So Akira's personality is really interesting, where he isn't the quiet type. He definitely talks more than you, um, compared to the manga and the anime. Uh, Akira is kind of like the sulky kid who will definitely act up, so he does have a little bit more of that rebellious spirit to him, and it really comes across in a couple of the scenes of him talking to the class for the first time, uh, telling us in his inner monologue how he feels about things like going to the Velvet Room for the first time, going to a palace, as well as having rumors spread about him. Uh, besides that, some other interesting changes I really liked... Uh, instead of Kamoshida just saying, hey, I'm really big and powerful, how dare you come at me, I'm going to 
expel you for no reason. They actually incorporate this really interesting uh, twist on things. So after Shiho attempts suicide, you come, uh, they uh, Ryuji and uh, Ryuji Akira and Cat Morgana um, confront Kamoshida and basically try and call him out on it. And Kamoshida flips it around, saying, "You know what? You have no proof that I did anything to Shiho. So I'm going to tell everyone you've been bullying because he was following them around and he knows he's been uh, getting uh, lots of questions and basically." Because he's been following you around knowing that they're going to uh, try and get evidence that he's been abusing the sports team. So he's flipping it around and he's going to spread the rumor that no, it's Akira and Ryuji who actually were bullying Shiho. And that's why she tried to kill herself. Which I think is a really interesting little thing. Obviously, in Persona 5, it's just, oh, hey, I'm going to have you expelled at the end of this X amount of days at the PTA meeting, for lack of a better word. But, um... Yeah, little things like that I really, really appreciate. Um, we don't get too much time in the palaces themselves outside of the torture segment. Um, I'm trying to think of... There was one thing I did want to mention about the palace segments. Yes, uh, the way the torture is shown off is actually a lot more dark and gruesome, which I really liked. In the game, Persona 5, it shows the volleyball students are basically kind of being comedically tortured. It's like, obviously, there's a darker intent there. But with this one, it's literally showing them getting beaten on the volleyball. Uh, their basically body is tied down to the volleyball net while the demons are just beating them senselessly. So it's a lot more dark, it's a lot more gritty, without kind of feeling like it's losing the comedic sense of Persona 5. There's definitely still lighter moments and jokes for here and there, but considering how dark the opening of Persona 5 is, it's not like super ha ha he he. Uh, but yeah, all in all, I was really surprised by how much I liked this. Um, I haven't read a manga in a really long time, mainly just because I've been trying to condense. I used to buy and read tons and tons and tons, but this has me really, really excited. For any of you guys who have not picked it up and are curious, I would say do not let the cover scare you away. I highly, highly, highly recommend this. Uh, volume 2 comes out in April, so... For April, I'm not sure if that will be the review or if uh, Volume 2 will be reviewed in May. Uh, I'm not necessarily totally set on what my next uh, review is going to be for March. Uh, I'll let you guys pick, actually. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Do you want me to start reviewing Persona 3, Persona 4, Persona Q3, Persona Q3-4, or Devil Survivor? Because those are all the ones I have right now. Uh, so let me know out of those five which ones you would want me to start with. And yeah. Let me know what you also thought of this review in general, the format, all the crazy, horrible words and bad camera etiquette I probably did. Let me know in the comments below. Uh, would appreciate as well if you guys can share this around to anyone who might be interested. And yeah, subscriptions are super, super appreciated. Help spread the word. I would love to get to 500 by what is a somewhat realistic date. If we could get to 500 subs before Persona 5 Royal comes out, that would be very timely and would make my ego feel a little bit better. So thank you guys for watching, and holy crap, we actually did a video under 9 minutes. I told my girlfriend I could do it. She did not believe me. We have just proven her wrong. See you guys.